Okay, end game opening. Let's apply it. Play a few games. One of the key things is not to let the end game opening change your basic system. Yeah, don't suddenly think, oh, I'm going to come out and start being forceful with my moves to press onto the king. It isn't that concept. The concept is you've got the end game opening right from the start in your mind. Your physicality on the board, keep nice and safe. Keep all of the systems that we've worked on, the simple direct moves to remove pieces from the board strategically, identifying weaknesses, capturing uh, in relevant areas, take your time, focus, all the basics that you've learned within the game of chess <clears throat> with the added bonus that your main focal point is to take critical pieces off the board <clears throat> so that the opponent resigns or they capitulate or you smother the king area. If you get any of those opportunities, you must grab them. That is the biggest difference. The choice between going for, say, attacking a pawn, yep, over putting pressure on the king area, you're going to plump for putting pressure on the king area or a piece that's protecting the king area. So it's adjusting now <clears throat> the priority of where you put your pieces. All your basics keep the same. If you feel that yes, you need to develop a piece because there's no other attack area, then do so. This poor, this poor queen is actually protecting this pawn. It's going to go and castle. His rook's going to come blasting through this centre here, so we don't want our queen on this in this area. We want to be focusing on this area here. So we need to make a move. Which is the critical move that is going to get me to the king side area and get my queen to safety. If I bring my queen here, already operating a diagonal onto the pawn here, we could look to it. Ah, it's queen side castling. <clears throat> He's going queen side castling. He doesn't want any of that. <laughs> It doesn't want to taste the end game opening. Mm-hmm. Okay. So that's what we call preemptive attacking from the back. So then how do we get our pieces working to this side, the queen side? What can we put a fret on? That lets them don't you don't even have to let them know that we're doing it, but we can try and force them into doing something they don't want to do. Lazy man's chess. Yes. Let's push the pawn. So everything that you've learnt in chess, at the right moment, at the right time, it has its place. Oh, I think he's wanting to get rid of the bishop, so he wants to go on Kingside Castle after all. Because now we've thrown Lazy Man up, he's like, whoa, I need to get across this side here. So, we could allow the bishop to be taken. I'm not really precious about it. Touch onto the knight, knight takes, queen takes. Hmm. Oh, we can keep, but I feel like I'm losing a tempo if I bring the bishop back. But what's his knight really doing? His knight really isn't doing anything. If he's that scared of getting attacked there, I'm going to keep that power base. So we must be doing something right for them to be fearful of that. Because he had the opportunity to go on Queenside Castle and he didn't take it. So obviously then they want to psycholog psychologically go and castle on the Kingside. 
and we're ready to attack on the king side. Also, he's probably preparing his bishop as well. Maybe he's bringing his bishop out. No, he's um, opening up his king side. He's preempting the attack. So he's basically going, if you're going to attack me, um, and then I'm going to attack you. This is where they may fall foul. Fingers crossed. We're going to touch onto his knight. His knight goes back. So he's now feeling that his king area is protected. So he may go on Kingside Castle. So just from that one threat of the Queen moving to this diagonal here, it sent our opponent into a, a, a crazy fit. And this is the type of thing we want to be looking at. As you can see, I've not even moved past the halfway mark. And I'm in endgame opening. I've done movements that have generated a response and they've actually gone back with the knight. So critical moves. We obviously want to open spaces, waiting, you see, he's waiting to see what actually happens. If I start expanding over on his king side, he's going to go and retract over onto the queen side. So I'm hoping he loses tempo because of this waiting game that he's playing. I still want to feel like I've got enough armory to sort of move from position to position. We've got lazy man that's ready to go up there. We can take this pawn as bishop comes down, bishop attacks his bishop, causing a bit of havoc in the middle. I'm going to take, it's a critical enough for me to try and open up a bit of space around this kingside area. Um, his pawn's going to drop. So his pawn will drop and he'll have a fork on our pieces. So, let's reframe the attack. Equal at the moment. Now got like a half open file on his king side. So he could castle and his rook is um, on the half open area. We could push on to his bishop with the pawn. Smaller piece attacking a higher piece. That strategy. He could take, take, take to open up our king area. But I'm assuming his bishop's just going to go back. This pawn here is all by itself, supported by the Queen. As you know, we worked on these types of things, putting two on ones, three on ones on pieces. But is it critical to our aim? This pawn seems to be pretty critical because behind the pawn is the bishop, behind the bishop is the king, currently. He's got a two on one, he's got a knight supporting, he's got the Queen supporting. I'm looking to fashion an attack and I'm going to attack the bishop. He's left the bishop there. <clears throat> he did that really quick, the rook move. So either I'm falling into a set play thing, opening up my king area, which I'm going to do because I'm taking a higher piece. So our focal point is around going, coming for this king area. He's no longer going to be castling on the king side. I don't know what that was, um, the rook move. They've actually asked to prop, uh, propose the tape back. So I genuinely don't know what that rook move was. So he's basically going to want to move his bishop. But they shouldn't have moved that fast. The whole idea behind playing chess is before you move, think. And I say that to myself, when I'm hovering my piece over a piece and then it drops and then I've mouse clicked because I'm doing a demonstration, that's my fault, you know. Um, I'm not going to ask for a take back, that was my fault, so I need to learn from that and um, stop doing it. Um, my opponent here, there's no way that that was like an attempt at going castling because you move your king first. So these are the types of things that you have to work into your game. And I think we did a good job of demonstrating the end game opening. He's continuing. Okay, that's fine. I thought he was going to resign. So he's gone queenside castle. So he's only down a piece, um, a minor piece. So there's no guarantees of anything. But it's it's a nice start. We we planned to focus on that area when we came out trumps. So let's get back into the game and have a look at what we want to target. Probably need to move our king across, not onto the white square because his pawn's going to drop. He's got queen diagonal there and he's got the white bishop as well. 
So what is critical for us now? We need to start angling towards the king air, queen side area. Lazy man seems to be wanting to do it for us really. I'm going to push the lazy man for now, just to let him know that we're going to try and open up this area, even if it's his pawn dropping down past the pawn. Our king is open now. So they'll be putting all their efforts into attacking our king area. They'll probably want to get rid of this pawn, so he'll probably come and attack this pawn and just probably even allow it to get taken because then something something will come and attack it. So we haven't won just because we've won or got an extra piece. Always be mindful of that. We now need to look at getting a better position on the board to be able to either remove pieces from the board so that the opponent capitulates and resigns or we smother the king area. Yep, like we said, bishop diagonal, king, on to the king here. Knight currently is protecting, but the pawn is going to push down. It's got the knight protecting this square as well. So we could bring the put bishop here as well. And this is like, my, this is minor defense work. Not really what I want to be doing um, when I'm in end game mode. But let's just cover it off just in case it is a critical move. Bishop comes here to help support the attack on the pawn when it pushes down because his bishop wants to come here the knight currently is protecting but if we can defend against this pawn all he needs to do then is bring his rook across I suppose then we've got our rook we can bring our rook to support and does he have another piece to support no I think that would be it so that would be a whole heap of supporting this area so that this pawn can't come down so that they can't get their diagonal in when I could ooh, if it was the other way around if I pushed this and if he did push past I was thinking the bishop would be able to get into this gap but the pawn is covering this gap so that might be a future tense thing what else is the knight knight move the king move the king out of the way Pushes the pawn, move the knight, or even move the knight across here. Look to get this rook up to this pawn here, doubling up the rooks on this file. Move the king, pawn drops, knight goes here. Yeah, knight goes here. Maybe his rook then comes behind. Okay, I'm going to move the king. I'm going to keep it simple because <clears throat> I want to try and get to their king area or get to a place. Yeah, they've dropped it straight off. So I'll bring the knight across here, like we said. Don't have any issues with that. It's the bishop's not the queen, so it's not going to be checkmate. Get the rook here. Get onto this dark square with the rook. Maybe get the queen behind because it might be too slow. Um, do, 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 do. Bishop attacking the bishop, but the queen is behind there. Oh, not the deadly knight. Oh, he's blocked though. He's blocked the bishop. He's blocked the bishop. Could bring the knight here, knight attacking his knight. His knight takes pawns on the rook then. That might be a nice block, but he doesn't have to take, so where is he really wanting to go? Yeah. Well, I think he would take, wouldn't he? We go with the knight, then I'm blocking my own passageway as well. If we brought the bishop here, attacking through, so we're pinning through, then through to the bishop, through to the queen. Does the knight move somewhere still? He's, he's still not going to come here, 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 because he'll get taken. 
So maybe we could use the bishop in a proactive way. Yeah, let's do that. And then maybe we could sit the queen just here. So the skill as well is being able to prevent your opponent from attempting to end game you. But nice appropriate positioning of your pieces should help you with your end game opening. I'm still in end game mode, I'm still focusing on how can I get to that king or reduce down their pieces. Always remember that, don't think, oh god I can't get to the king. Um, because most of the time you can't get to the king in the early part of the game. That's why the introduction of the removing pieces from the board really does help. Because you might never get to the king because you've taken all the pieces off the board. So this knight has come for an exchange and potentially wants the port two pawns in the center. But we do have pawns on either side to block them off. But this pawn is now undefended here. But he is attacking our bishop and we do have a queen that is defending can he put a check on our king is he going to be going for a rook might have been a bit of a knee jerk reaction that because you do find that people forget that they're supporting a pawn so the knight takes and we're on his bishop but where can this new introduction of a knight go can he he can't go there can't, well he can, can he's probably just going to take the bishop so we, if we take, hmm, sorry, if we take the pawn, yeah, I thought that didn't look right. If we take the pawn, conscious I'm on three minutes now, and um, it's a 15 minute zero increment game, they're on nine minutes. So I'm going to take the pawn, I'm on the bishop. So again, it looks like we're accumulating. Oh, and he's taken. So his knight, like I've, I've, I've looked and the knight, well, I suppose it can go somewhere, it can go anywhere because the bishop's going to be on the queen. But there's no checkmate from that bishop being on that diagonal. So they have a move very quickly because they were mad, because they'd lost the pawn. Uh, no, now he's looking for the queen to x-ray through. He's actually attacking our knight as well if we bring the queen here supporting the knight but also getting supported by the pawn if there's some madness going on with this knight because he's got a discover check on our queen I'm going to have to move a bit quicker now but the, you know the, the, the idea is we want to focus on the king area try and get the suffocation now as well but at the, in the meantime, we're peeling off pieces. We're actually taking pieces off the board, small incremental stages as well. So we're covering off the elements of the end game opening, apparently quite nicely at the moment. But we'll see because the opponent may have some magic up his sleeve. Nice diagonal for the dark square bishop for the king. We do have Lazy Man here, Scud Missile, just making its way down. So we're trying to cover all sides of the board with our attack towards suffocating the king. Let's move the rook back, and again there's a pawn here, but this is like a poison pawn, isn't it? Because we go here, then the rook comes facing our queen, and then can't take the bishop because the queen's protecting, can't take the knight because the you know the queen's protecting could take this pawn here but then the rook could come and then basically they'll be taking the knight off the board and my time is running out big style so I'm gonna have to look to see if I can go for an exchange and get get this file if we can own this file probably not because if he takes we take his rook's gonna come across but in terms of pieces being demolished at the moment we're up in that vein so he might not want to exchange just yet still looking for this knight to find a magic place to actually grab something for free that's what this knight's looking for 
but our queen is supported by the pawn. And if we can get one of these rooks off, then the queen can potentially take this extra pawn working towards the king area. And I thought it wouldn't. I thought it wouldn't. Mm -hmm. um, if the bishop comes here, then comes here. It's attacking our pawn, isn't it? The bishop comes here, then goes there and sits there and does nothing and just holds that pawn off. That must be something. And I just need to make a move. So he's attacking this pawn with the rook. The bishop's holding this area a little bit. My poor little scud missile's gone because the queen can actually take it now because I've moved my rook. Looks like I've got, whoa, let's just grab before I lose the thread. It's queen. If his queen takes the pawn, is, is he mad or not? He's coming down fast like um, he knows something. Um, let's pin this to the king. Or are they looking at my clock and thinking they're going to put pressure on it or something? Got to be careful. His knight is oh, chomping at the bit, but he's, he can't reach our king. So the knight's going to take the bishop, obviously. And do we can take with our queen, we would pin the rook, then this pawn comes and protects. Then our knight can attack the rook, I suppose, but then is he going to attack us with something else? So from a distance our pieces are facing towards the King Gary, but we're in destructive mode whereby we're, we're just putting loads of pressure on pieces after pieces. So hopefully it stands us in good stead because we're in the end game opening mode. I'm hoping it's coming across. I'm hoping the, the concept is coming across in terms of um, the explanation for it. It is a simple concept. Um, you can do it from the back like we've shown here. It's not a forcing thing. This is like whatever the opponent gives to you. It's then your mindset as to, okay, is that a critical piece that's gonna help me to get this piece off the board in a very strategical way so that then I can make my way towards smothering the king at the later stages of the game or am I just fencing around with my pieces looking pretty so they're on four minutes at the minute I'm on two minutes still he can defend it but uh, I mean yeah just just gonna take the knight with um, sorry the bishop with the knight so that's obvious and I'm going to go here with my queen and then he can push his pawn onto my queen actually because he's got the rook there yeah but if he does that then we'll take the rook so he's not going to do that so he'd have to do a company oh hold on a minute hold on his knight takes our queen takes and pushes the pawn down protecting the rook then the knight, we said the knight was coming here then, didn't we? To attack the rook. Then he pushes his pawn down onto our queen. And that pawn is protecting. So he might escape, actually. Actually, that's a check on his king. If he keeps his king there, so we do win the tempo. So he wouldn't be able to push down onto... Is, um, what has he done? Oh, he's doing it the backward way around. So we could go here because it's a check on the king. And we've got protection from the rook, so we'll go with the check on the king. Yeah, it's a good job that we talked that through just then. I was panicking about the McQueen getting squeezed. And now we can take the rook. And he's probably going to push onto our queen at some stage, or he might just take the knight. 
1 minute 45 I really have to speed up now I'm just going to lose on time here so what's this knight got his knight's got a nice move here with his queen supporting that would be a beautiful picture for the knight here then queen checkmate but currently we have the bishop here so we probably need to keep the bishop on this diagonal so that he doesn't get that They're on two minutes. Countdown. Does he just drop his pawn onto the McQueen? The Queen's done its job there now, so I can freely move it. So he does take. Let's just take with the Bishop. Oh, do you know? What, what was I just saying? I need to keep this Bishop on this diagonal because the Knight wants this. <laughs> He's just done it as well. Oh dear, let's attack the queen. Because it's got support from the pawn. And he's also extraying through to his king. So we'll capture oh, on the knight now. Has he got a funky fork? Knight here, no. Knight there. Knight here, attacking the pawn. So he does escape. Oh, he can go here. So that's how we've used the end game opening uh, in this particular game. And it really, for me, it's about keeping those good solid basics and just keep on drilling those solid basics and choosing the right moment to actually capture put frets on because you can put frets on at the back you don't need to jump into the middle of the board to be putting you know your major frets on the king area and some may say well that's like tactic stuff um, i'm not a tactics man so it's um it, it for it's gone straight over my head when people talk about tactics uh, I'm no good at tactics trainer. I can do puzzles and stuff like that. I understand the concepts of things and why it's resigned. 